Hey everybody, Coach Brian Champ here. Earlier we talked about the importance of a morning routine. Now I'm gonna talk about the importance of an evening routine. I really think the evening routine is probably more important than the morning routine because if we're up too late, well, then your morning routine's kind of gonna be off, right? So let's talk about the evening routine. Let's start with this. What time do you see yourself going to bed at night? Okay, so ask yourself, what time can you realistically go to bed at night? So write that down, okay? Now, everything's kind of based upon that. And I want you to consider this. Between 10 p.m. and 6 p.m. is when we recover. That's when our hormones balance. Between 10 and 2 is when there's physical recovery taking place. And when, in between 2 and 6 is when there's mental recovery taking place. So if you're awake at 1030, well, you're not going to get the recovery you need, maybe from your workouts, and you may increase your likelihood of getting injured. With every hour, every minute that you're up past 10 o'clock, you're probably going to have a harder time losing belly fat, losing weight, reducing your joint pain, optimizing your immune system. So I highly recommend <laughs> going to bed before 10 o'clock or, or being in bed at 10 o'clock, just, just whatever it is. Now, if you're going to bed at two though, it's going to be hard for you to go to bed at 10. You know, just, you're just not going to be able to do that. And you may say to yourself, well, Brian, I can't do that. I'm a night person. I can't do that. And here's the thing, shut off your technology and let's see if you're a night person. It's just, it's just what it is. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, I tend to consider myself a night person also. If I really want to get things done, I, I do get it done at night just because my kids are asleep, my wife's asleep, my phone's not ringing, but I feel like shit the next day. So let's, let's figure this out. Let's get control of our sleep patterns and you're gonna have a, a, a different life. Results are gonna be easier when you go to sleep and sleep at, in the hours that you're supposed to. Now you may justify that you got eight hours sleep because you slept between 2 a.m. and 10 a.m., but that's not the way our circadian rhythms are supposed to go. So we've been operating um, with light dark cycles for, for eons. And just because technology became you know, more commonplace in our lives doesn't mean that our bodies are responding very well. And clearly there's some problems. You know, 80% of the population is not very healthy. You know, most folks are pre-diabetic or diabetic and have metabolic syndrome, cancers up the yin yang, heart disease is, is off the hook. You know, COVID's crazy. Uh, I mean, it's just, you know, it's crazy, right? But we can, we can turn that around. It's just taking care of ourselves and doing some of the things we used to do back in the day. All right. So what time can you go to bed? All right. Let's say it's a 10 o'clock. All right. Now we're going to reverse and engineer everything. So if I want to be at 10 o'clock, I want you to shut your, your technology down, ideally at nine o'clock at, you know, if, you, if needed, let's go 930. Okay. So now same thing. If I was going to commit to going to bed at 1030, let's shut down technology at 930 or so, 930, 10, preferably 930. Now let's say you're going to bed at 1030, all right? So 1030, be in bed. I want you to shut down your technology at 930. Between 930 and 1030, what I want you to do with your, with your evening routine is wind down and get your stuff done that will help you have a great morning tomorrow. So between 930 and 1030, in this case scenario, I want you to get your water for your morning. I want you to, to think about what you're going to eat for the next day for both breakfast and lunch, maybe even dinner. So hopefully you have some food in a freezer or something like that. I want you to, at minimum, just take that, that food out, okay? Take that food out of your freezer and defrost it, okay? Do whatever you need to do to have a successful breakfast, lunch, and maybe even dinner the next day. In the ideal world, I'm a big fan of whatever I have for dinner, make for lunch and even breakfast the next day. Keeps it simple, okay? So that's something you can do between 9.30 and 10.30 rather than watching Netflix. What else can you do at night? Well, how about writing your list of to-dos? How about writing the most important thing you need to accomplish at nighttime before you go to bed? And then all the little to-dos that would be great to accomplish as well, but there's nothing more important than that most important to-do that will take you to the next level, that will make you feel accomplished. We all want to feel progress in life. So if we write out one thing that we want to accomplish and we just achieve one thing, like 
just that feeling of accomplishment will, will allow you to feel good and make good decisions that follow, okay? So consider that. Consider getting a journal or some kind of you know notepad, whatever works for you, and write your to-dos and the most important thing you need to accomplish. And also during that time, I recommend thinking about what you're grateful for. You know, uh, it's called a gratitude practice. I'm sure you heard of it. So think about three things you're grateful for or more. Uh, write down all the things you're grateful for. Maybe do a process called the daily examine, which is something that I learned in 2010. I uh, took a course at the Mercy Center in Burlingame, California, uh, called the Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius. It was a life-changing program. Every day, they told me to reflect on my day. It's called the examine. And they wanted me to reflect on every single moment, every single thing that I was grateful for. You know, waking up, you know, seeing my wife, seeing my kids, meeting with my clients, teaching my classes, the, the little things. Don't take anything for granted. Ex examine your day, reflect on your day, and just write down, or maybe if you're not a writer, just bullet point the key areas, okay? So that's a great little thing to do. Also consider prayer. Uh, consider doing a, an app like Calm or Headspace. Those are great things to consider as well. All right, so that's the evening routine. And then the last thing I want you to think about is this. If you are in bed at 10.30, I would rather you don't eat past 7.30, about three hours or so before bedtime, okay? So at 7.30 would be last call for your food. Um, if you, you know, want something to, to, to drink or whatever, how about some tea after that? You know, if you're, if you're needing something to fulfill your at like 8.30 or so because you're up till 10.30 and that's a big problem with, with being up late is that we tend to eat later. Um, but just, just remember, have some tea, some decaffeinated tea, have some water um, and maybe go brush your teeth. Now there's other things that we can talk about having for, um, for food, um, preferably just don't have a lot of carbohydrates, but maybe you want a little protein, a little fat, maybe that could be something we talk about in a coaching call. But for the most part, Let's not have too much food late at night because late night eating definitely increases your weight in the morning more than you would probably like it to, okay? So that's the, the evening routine, all right? So um, try it out. Um, we're, we have a morning routine. We have an eating routine. Routines are the key. We need routines. We need to keep things simple and consistent, okay, everybody? So if you have any questions, let me know. But that is something I want you to think about and adopt and you know find a great evening routine for you.